Now, in ways I find hard to describe, the fact Scarborough cancelled its New Year fireworks so as not to upset a resting walrus struck me as one of the most heartwarming bits of news of the whole festive period. And, and I speak as one who doesn't like to think of councils cancelling anything. Now that same walrus, nicknamed Thor, has just moved on from his latest stopping point at Blythe in Northumberland. Those tracking his movements hope he will now head north to Arctic waters where he more properly belongs. Thor's stay in Blythe was monitored by the British Divers Marine Life Rescue and my next guest is Dan Jarvis from that association who can tell us more about Thor's travels. Good evening, Dan. How Good are evening. you? Good to see I'm you. I'm well, thank you. And yourself? I'm good. Now, the pictures of Thor have been amazing. Uh, one thing I couldn't quite gauge, though, just how big is an Arctic walrus? Uh, well, Thor is a young adolescent male. Uh, we estimate his weight anywhere between half to three quarters of a tonne. Uh, however, a fully grown male can be well in excess of a ton, so so he's still not anywhere near fully grown at the moment. So he is really impressive in size already, but will in a few years be even more impressive. Absolutely. Now, what would he have been doing so far south? Well, we're treating this uh, in conjunction with the other recent walruses that we've had around Europe. This is this is the fourth one that we've had in two years in Europe, the third uh, in the UK in two years as well, in fact, which which is unusual. So, so we're treating it as, you know, potential warning signs with climate change of the reducing ice habitat in the Arctic, forcing these animals further afield. Um, we're aware that Arctic researchers have documented walruses being uh, sort of forced to use island habitats more frequently rather than the ice flows where they should be. So this is our concern is that, uh, you know, is this an early warning that we might see more walruses or, or other Arctic species, for example, venturing further afield to find more suitable habitat as, as they're losing theirs. Why, if he's, a, if he's a cold water animal, why would he follow... Uh... Or, or, or track into warmer and warmer water, such as we have around our temperate coastline? Uh, well, most of the walruses that have turned up in recent years have been uh, juvenile or young adult animals, which do tend to spend their first few years of life before they become fully mature uh, animals, uh, sort of exploring their habitat. They do range much wider and further than their adult counterparts. So uh, potentially as they are ranging further and further afield, potentially due to climate change, we can't say that for definite or sure, but potentially due to climate change, these animals that do tend to be wandering further because of the life stage that they're at are just venturing further into European waters, uh, looking for new habitats, looking for food sources uh, before hopefully returning there where they came from. You, you, you mentioned that it's not the first time that, that uh, a walrus has come into our waters. How often? What are the previous incidences have there been of such visitors? Yeah, absolutely. So the last walrus in the UK was known as Freya. Uh, she travelled again through Europe. Uh, she came to Northumberland in uh, November of 2001. And she then spent Christmas and New Year at Shetland. Uh, she then... Uh, went over to Norway a few months later uh, and unfortunately back in the summer of this year uh, due to uh, what we perceive at BDMLR as a lack of uh, proper management by authorities over there, by government officials, allowing large crowds of people to gather in close proximity, uh, potentially putting themselves in danger. They elected to actually uh, put her down, uh, which came as a huge shock, and there was a, a significant international backlash as a result of that. Um, they, really, so, they, put, uh, they, put the animal, they put the animal down. Why? That seems that sounds inexcusable. Absolutely, yeah. There, were, there was international outrage about this at the time that it happened. It was around uh, sort of August time. Uh, when this happened, uh, she'd found her way up to Oslo, so of course, uh, you know, a high population centre. Um, we offered advice. Uh, we, we were there ready at the end of a phone or an email to provide advice and support. 
uh, based on our experiences of having dealing de dealt with walruses in the last uh, couple of years that have been uh, difficult to manage. Uh, but we received no communication back, unfortunately. Um, there was an assurance back in June that the animal was not going to be put down, although it was rumoured that this was being discussed. Uh, and right up till August, uh, that message was still being put about. And then suddenly, within a couple of days, uh, Freya was just put down by the authorities. And they claimed that this was because she presented a danger to the public. Whereas if you see the photos and hear the stories of what happened in Oslo, you can see people virtually within touching distance, large crowds, dozens if not hundreds of people within touching distance of Freya. Goodness. And it's important to remember these are wild animals. You, you, you know, they are outside of their normal habitat. They don't normally come across humans and therefore don't have an inbuilt wariness. So they potentially will allow people to come surprisingly close to them. But if they are provoked, if they feel threatened, they will be defensive. Uh, you know, they will protect themselves. Uh, you know, it might be that they do the fight or flight response, which if they can't easily escape, it might cause an injury to somebody. And that could end badly for the animal as well. That, Tony, you're listening to that. That sounds like a violation to me. My, my, when I saw, that's not, what, that's not obviously what's happened to Tor, but that, when I saw the images of Tor uh, in Scarborough and then in, in Blythe, it was magical. I thought to, to see that creature in, in close proximity as a visitor, I thought, I mean, it really touched my heart. And I, and I love the fact that he's this kind of nosy little thing who went kind of... You're not whether, little. Whether, whether, half well, a ton. Whether it's climate change or whether it isn't, he just, as, as they said, adolescent walruses are more adventurous. And so this, this little guy, big guy, Thor, decided that he was going to have a little nose around our island. Can you imagine if we put him down? I mean... Where was the thinking there? What was mm. the thought behind it? But there is, but there is a, don't you think, uh, Julie, there's a magic whenever we get, you know, whether it's a rare bird uh, or, you, you know, or, or, or some other visitor from the, from the natural world that doesn't necessarily belong here. There's such an excitement and a, an electricity to, to, you know, a brief encounter of that nature, is there not? Oh, yeah, and, and Thor was actually on my neck of the woods. It was on the coast in the south first, I believe, because uh, I, there was a beach near us and it was all on local social media, Thor's there. And what I found interesting was after what happened to poor Freya, because I did read about that, uh, people were a lot more mindful not to crowd the animal, not to go down there, although how tempting it must have been, I know, to go and get pictures. But people were saying, no, don't get too close, don't go near. Um, and thankfully, obviously, the animal was allowed to then go off on its merry way. But I think it's terrible what happened to the, the other war. I think it's unforgivable. Uh, Dan, where is, where is Tor now, so far as we can tell, or has he disappeared once and for all? Uh, that's probably the million-dollar question, isn't it? Uh, we'd love to know. Um, we've only been tracking him through sightings being reported to us and using photos uh, of markings on his body to determine that this is definitely the same walrus. Um, so, uh, that. You know, there's no actual tracker on the animal. We haven't got a satellite tracking device on him or anything. So we don't know where he is at the moment. But uh, from his latest movements coming up from the English Channel, where he'd been previously, where you'd seen him down at Southampton or heard about him down in Southampton uh, before Christmas, uh, you know, he's making a definite movement back north now. And this is what we really hope for these animals, is that they do make these long uh, journeys, they do need the stop-offs in between to recover their energy, uh, to feed up, put weight back on, and that's why it's been really important to us in getting messaging out there whenever he does turn up and, and wherever he does turn up, that it's really key to avoid disturbing him as much as we possibly can, because any disturbance, especially repeated disturbances where he's being woken up, being forced to go in the water because he doesn't feel comfortable being there, for instance, it's going to impact on his ability to survive and his ability to make it back to the Arctic. So, uh, you, you know, we've been really, really grateful, uh, you know, hugely grateful to the authorities, the police and other organisations who have been working with us and also the public, who by and large have been massively supportive, followed the advice. There's only been one or two very small exceptions where we've had to ask people to, to you know, not, try to get really close up for photos, for instance. Um, and we're giving him the best possible chance at getting back to the Arctic under his own steam. Dan Jarvis from the British Divers Marine Life Rescue Association, thank you so much. A wonderful story, heartwarming stuff. Uh, and it, please, if you do find out what's happened to Tor, uh, will you come back and let us know? Absolutely, yeah, thank you.